Everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Craft Designs. <laughs> I've got this rather ancient box of decorative bells that I'm pretty sure came from the Dollar Tree. Probably been five years ago or something. But this one was not in the box, and it it evidently rested against something that ate the finish away. I'm not going to throw it away. I've got, this is the uh, Swelligant system. Um, this is the metal coating, which is an iron coating, which has chunks, of pieces, whatever you want to call it, of iron. Ugh. It's evidently stronger than me. Ugh. Well, that was tough. Okay. You can see it's kind of a gray color. We're going to paint a coat of this on and let it dry. And then we're going to come back and put another coat on. And while that's still wet, um, I'm going to put a napkin under it. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> put this put put this patina on. I don't know why I have such trouble with peas. This is the Tiffany Green Rust. It has different effects depending on the metal that you put it on. The iron will give you rust. Alright, so patina, iron, but to make that really stand out, I'm going to pick out a couple of colors of the dioxides. Alright, the dioxides work with the swelligant system. If you put it on while the patina is still wet, it almost blooms along with the patina. It just gives an absolutely gorgeous effect. Alright, so let's pull our little string. Alright, I'm going to get a paintbrush out and I'm going to get some of the dioxides. Okay, now I've got a really ratty paintbrush. Do not hear me. Do not. <laughs> Use one of your good paintbrushes. This, the iron in particular, has a lot of granules and they will do damage <laughs> to your brush. Okay. So, now I'm going to wish I'd have left the string on. I'm just going to paint it. Probably take more of the finish off. Now it won't cover the first coat. Uh, besides taking... <coughs> more off hey now another coat you 
you want it kind of heavy so that it will still be wet when you go to put the patina on. I'm just gonna squeeze a little in there. This is a sea sponge. Christy Friesen does sell these. Of course, you can buy them at just about any craft supply store. It's very dry. But after just a minute of soaking up this patina These are the dioxides. I have the same little squirt top. Shake them. Because if you're like me, you never know how long it's been since you've used these. I have literally had these for, I don't know, before I had the stroke, huh? 10 years maybe. Okay. Now, I would say I just want to let that work, but what I'm going to do is... Waste a little bit of that patina. And wet the napkin quite heavily. Pull that pen out. That's just one of my uh, corsage pins, I think is what they're sold as. Okay, I'm going to scoot this over here. Then I'm just going to wrap that wet napkin and make a little, a little package. in there uh, just a sprinkle or two because of course this is the one that I don't have another one of all right now I'll just let this set it's gonna start to bloom it's gonna start to turn sludgy yucky looking and then it'll turn a R rusty sienna color and then it will start to really bloom you'll start to see that granular rust and the orange and the yellows come out it's quite an amazing thing this rust is one of the most dramatic but it does take longer <laughs> so 
I'm going to let this set and I'll be back. We'll check on it maybe 30 minutes and then maybe let it set a little more. We'll just have to check. It's literally only been like five minutes, but I just want to show you that's what I'm talking about. It really is overtaken that chrome finish. That chrome finish is gone. Tiny little bit where the pin was stuck through, but okay. And like I said, that'll just continue to bloom. Alright, okay, it's been about an hour for about the last 10 minutes I've left it open just to let it dry. Now, of course, it's still damp oh, where it was sitting on the napkin right there, but there's a little bit of the chrome showing through there and a little bit right there where I touched it, but now... The patina will still be, I don't know how you would say it, active for 72 hours. But when you've decided that it has rusted enough, just dunk it in water. Just dunk it in water. It won't stop any of the patina that's happening. It won't do anything but stop the patina from blooming anymore okay but i want to add this is the old silver uh prima wax prima metallic wax now if i add this right now while it's still blooming the patina will continue to bloom even through this um, metallic wax. And I literally, I just want like that. So you can tell it used to be silver. But now it's not. Definitely won't hit that spot. Okay. Those spots a little bit brighter. And then I can do this side. Good. It literally landed right at my feet too. <laughs> Couldn't ask for that to happen again. Okay, I'm just gonna put my little Okay. Now here it is. Man, that would be perfect on my Christmas tree. My Christmas tree has uh gold stag heads and brown and gold christmas balls and the like i think that would be really pretty maybe with a different string that's pretty and it still jingles These don't even have strings. It does. It does rattle a bit differently. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
I just gave this a coat of gesso and I'm gonna give it a second coat. Just so it covers all over. Right. Preferably without painting me. Which <laughs> y'all know that ain't gonna happen, right? Okay, now while that is still wet, yeah, there went the knot getting it on me. My glitter paper, this is the polyflake which just it came from Walmart and I'm not kidding it was 15 years ago if it was yesterday I'm sorry did I say Walmart I think I meant Michaels I don't think I meant I know I meant but I should have just resigned myself to the fact I was going to get completely coated with glitter. And of course, where I touched it. Okay, now I'm going to I'm gonna hang this to dry. Alright. Okay. I don't know how I lost some footage. I lost the footage of me making the carrot nose. And I just uh, rolled out a disc with my pasta roller. My rolling pin, basically. And I cut a slit and a hole so it would fit over the uh -huh, cord and that's all I've done I did this last night so they're both dry and glued on nicely so we can go on from there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll out another piece of the uh, paper clay and I'm going to use this as a cutter. About that size. Okay. For his top hat. That This will be the brim. This will be the top. Then all we need to do is make the middle. Let's get to that. Okay. I rolled my mat back. So then I'm working right on my desk, on my glass. Okay, and nothing about paper clay needs to be that precise. Okay. Now, also, don't work with paper clay right on your silicone mat. It, it will mark your... It will mark up your mat and you can see how concerned I am about that okay there is our brim okay now I re-rolled it out this time did not cut the hole out in the middle just cut it up halfway 
uh, sliced it halfway and then fitted it fitted it <laughs> around the cord okay Now, I'm just going to let that dry like that. Now, here in Texas, the humidity today is only 33. It's kind of high for us, but... Okay, so, um, 30 minutes or so. And then I'll be back to uh, show you how we finish it. I got a little bit. Like a finger length. <laughs> Just, I'm going to try to roll it out. Long enough we can make the band of that hat. Alright. Now just clay blade. Which also works on paper clay. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to start out with it. Even on each side. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Okay. I want his hat going to be a top hat, but I want it to be like all crumpled and wrinkly and I still want the, obviously, the top flat. That's why I dried it. Something like that. So I know that one side, I... I want to be thinner. Sorry. <laughs> Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Alright. I measured it and it was three inches ish. <laughs> Alright. Now, I'm going to Yeah, like that. Okay. Just gonna squirt it with a little bit of water. Then I'm gonna grab this is the Aline's clear gel tacky glue. While gloppy and messy, it dries clear. <laughs> okay, let's see. I go along. This upper edge, which is the one that I tapered on each end. Sorry. <laughs> On the other side. Hey, I must have measured it right. Now, what I mean by wrinkled a 
want it to be top hatish. <laughs> Yeah, I guess on that side's alright. I mean, it doesn't really matter which side. So, we need a little more glue. It's another thing I like about this glue. <laughs> you don't have to wait on it too long to... Now, <gasps> all that. Uh oh, don't, don't start breaking out. I need my tool, I need my fingers clean. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> now we'll let that dry and then we'll paint it and uh, touch up the glitter. Okay. I don't know how well I'm showing it, not very well. There you go. A little snowman -y gnome jingle bell. Sorry, it didn't jingle very good. Now I did. Alright, I'm going to let this dry, and then we're going to paint it. This is the Americana Persimmon. And I've got orangier oranges. <laughs> if that makes any sense. But I really kind of don't want it an orangey orange. I'm sorry, I, of course, I painted the carrot first. And then I'm going to do the hat. Oh, I'm liking him already. Alright. Either I'm just weak. <laughs> Or all these lids are really stuck. Okay. Make everything difficult on yourself. It helps when you have actual paint <laughs> to work with. And not just residue. See? Paint. It actually paints on. <laughs> okay, now. This top part up here. I really want to paint the cord. But y'all know what's going to happen, right? Okay. I'm 
I'm gonna let it dry. Um, hit the uh, holidays, as my husband calls them. With a little extra paint after it dries. Okay. Now, first thing we did was we took this uh, rather trashed little bell and trashed it some more. <laughs> And rusted it using the swelligant system. Alright, please excuse the sparkle everywhere. My husband will come in and say, uh, You got glitter on? He always says that. Because I've always got glitter on. Alright, that one is just a pretty little rusty bell. Okay. Then there's this one. Really cute. Really sparkly. It has a little extra glitter on his hat. Anyway, super cute. Sorry, I don't have a little mini tree to hang it on yet. <laughs> Alright. This was just from a cheap set. Cheap. This was just from a set of bells from the Dollar Tree. A little set of Christmas bells. These are from a few years ago. They just say decorative bells. And they are just that. Little decorative bells. Little metal. Chromey kind of finish. Decorative bells. I was surprised. The... the the rusty one here was evidently from another package because it already had a string the one I took off these don't have strings okay completely a DIY package of little decorative bells and it was a nine pack alright so Stuck him in here. Can't get him back out. So there's what we made today. Super cute. I love it. Alright. Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, <laughs> I've got an Amazon shop. And I have no idea if any of this even came from there. The decorative bells, like I said, came from the Dollar Tree. They may, in fact, be on Amazon. And if they are, I'll find a link. Um, the paper clay is also listed in my Amazon shop. Uh, acrylic paints you could get anywhere. And the Deco Art Glamour Dust is from Deco Art. Alright. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please like, share, and subscribe. Like every video that you enjoy watching. Just just make it a habit and click the like. That evidently is what YouTube is picking up on right now. So, everybody needs a little like. <laughs> Bye for now.